Hey, what's going on guys? Today in this video, I wanna show you how to install vibration dampeners on your CRTN 3D printer. I know it can be quite a loud machine, so for me, the quieter I can get it, the better. So let's jump right into this. The things we're gonna need are the vibration dampeners themselves, two M3 six millimeter hex head screws, an Allen wrench, a smaller Allen wrench, those came with the CR10 printer itself, and then a crescent wrench of some kind. Okay, let's move over to the printer. Okay guys, the first thing we wanna do is remove the four hex head screws around this plate here. Now when you get down to the last screw, you may wanna go ahead and once you get started, Put your hand on the plate so it doesn't just drop. Okay, and then we can just let this hang down to the side. The next thing we need to do is take these brass spacers off using our crescent wrench. We don't want to completely undo them yet, we just want to break them free. They might be a bit tight. And now that we've broken them loose, we're going to put a hand on the motor and unscrew these by hand. That way the motor doesn't drop down. Now we're gonna take the motor out of the hole. We're just gonna remove the belts off the gear here, turn it slightly, and pull it right on out. Now I'm gonna set the motor over here on the control box. Let's move the camera and see what's next. Now we're gonna loosen up the gear from the shaft of the motor move it up out of the way so once we get the dampener on we'll be able to reach these hex screws so you just want to loosen these little hex screws there will be two of them and then lift your motor up I'm just gonna lift it flush to the top of the shaft and only tighten down one just to hold it out of the way okay the next step we're actually gonna go ahead and put the vibration dampener on the motor now it's very important that you notice two of the holes are threaded on opposite sides of the dampener while two of the holes opposite of each other do not have threads. We want to put the non-threaded side down on the motor. Okay. Now we're going to take our M3 six millimeter hex head screws and put one in each hole on both sides of the motor front and back. We're going to go ahead and tighten those down with an Allen wrench. Get the back one here. All right, we're ready to attach it back to the printer. Now, before we put the motor back on the printer, I suggest letting the tension out of the X axis belt. And in order to do this, all you have to do is loosen these two screws here. This is gonna make lining the holes up with the motor much easier. And we'll retighten this afterwards. Now we're ready to reattach the motor. We're just gonna slide it back through the hole we took it out of and be sure to pull your X-axis belt around the gear. The next thing we wanna do is take one of the brass spacers and find one of the holes that lines up with the dampener on the other side. Okay. And we're going to just hand tie that down and we're going to take another brass spacer and do it in the opposite corner. Once we got them hand tight, we're going to take our crescent wrench and tighten both of them down uh, about a quarter to a half turn just to make sure they're secure on there. Okay. You don't want to over torque these. All right. We're now ready to reattach the front plate. We're gonna take the original M3 screws that we took out of this and reattach it. So you wanna put one in each hole. Again, just hand tight. Now you wanna make sure when you're putting this plate back on that your X end stop switch is on the right side facing the extruder. We'll take our Allen wrench and we'll go ahead and tighten these down the rest of the way. 
Alrighty, and that's it. Now that we have everything back together, we need to align the belt with this rod here. First thing we need to do is loosen the hex head we tightened earlier on the gear. So I'm just going to grab the extruder and turn it a bit, and that'll help turn the motor for you. Then we're going to take our Allen wrench and just loosen that gear up. Okay, now that we have it loose, we're going to just shift it back and forth until this belt is right in the middle of that rod. And that looks pretty close right there. I believe that's right in the middle. So the next thing we do is we're going to tighten this hex head back down. And then we're going to tighten the other one. Don't forget to do both of them. And you want to make sure one of them lands on the flat part of the shaft. The motor there. Okay, we to tighten those down. Alright, that completes the X-axis assembly. One thing we may want to do, since we did loosen the belt earlier, is go back and tighten that. And I'll show you how to do that right now. We're going to take an, another Allen wrench and slide it down between the rod and this holder here. And we're just going to kind of pry it out just a little bit. And I suggest tightening this first one on the inside. Get it nice and snug, but not too tight. You don't want to wrench it down yet. Then kind of get this thing flush and straight with the rod, the cylinder thing. Okay? And then we can tighten down the second one here. Okay, now that we have that tight, the belt's nice and has some good tension on it. That should do it. Now we have the X-axis vibration dampener installed. Let's move over to the Y-axis and let's see how that's going to work. Now we're going to do the Y-axis vibration damper. This one seems to be a lot easier than the X because there's a lot less going on. All we have to do is take out the four hex head screws around the motor here. So let's go ahead and do that right quick. And when you get down to your last screw, I suggest holding on to the motor just so it doesn't drop onto the table. Sorry if my hands are a bit in the way. It's a little small cramped area here. Okay, I got all four screws out. Now I'm just going to let the tension off the belt and pull it on through the hole. And I'm just going to lay the motor right here beside it. The next step is to just take our vibration dampener and again we want to make sure the threaded uh, holes on this vibration dampener which are on opposite sides is up and that the unthreaded ones are the ones going down on the motor. This is a very important step. Okay, and we're just going to put two of the screws that we just took out in opposite sides on the motor and go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, now that we have it attached, let's go ahead and loosen up the gear here again and push it up the shaft just so when we stick it back on, we have enough room to get a hold of it. Okay. I've gotten that loosened up and I'm going to pull it up. All right. And I'm just going to tighten down one of them for now. All right. And now it's ready to put back into the hole. Okay. And as we put this back in the hole, we want to make sure we orientate the wires the same way they were when we took it off. So that will be facing towards the bed. Now as we put it through the hole, we want to make sure we get our Y-axis belt back on the gear like it's supposed to be. Alright, we want to line our dampener up with the bracket. And now we're going to put our M3 screws in. I'm going to change arms here. And we're going to go ahead and put them in opposite corners, screwing them into the dampener.
I'm just using the Allen wrench to tighten them back down. These little screws can be a bit frustrating to work with, so be patient if you're not getting in the hole. All right. The next step we're going to take is we're going to align the belt with the rod here and get it over this pulley as well. So we're going to loosen the hex head in the gear here. And then we're just going to adjust it left and right until it looks just about centered right over that gear and the center of the Y-axis rod here. And then we're going to tighten it down, tighten down the hex heads. Okay, and now we're done. And that's how you install vibration dampers on the CR10 3D printer. I hope this video helped and I'll see you in the next one.